everyone. Pranam to all of you. Uh, welcome uh, to our uh, spiritual meeting for the month of July uh, 2024. Uh, so it's an interesting topic uh, which was given by the sage. Uh, and the title is The Wondrous Nature of Consciousness. So before we delve uh, deeper into this uh, topic, you see, uh, just uh, before we started, a communication came from the sage to distinguish between two things. You see, one is what we call as the teaching, you know, which is given by the sages. So if we take uh, sage Ramana, uh, you know, uh, his teaching consists of uh, who am I and the practice of who am I. But you see, the experience of the sage is very different from the teaching. And uh, the experience of the sage was basically, you see, that uh, what we call as ajeta, that nothing is actually ever born. So whether we are talking about the wondrous nature of consciousness, or we are actually talking about that pure, ever-present, changeless reality, consciousness, the experience of the sage was that there is only one thing in existence, and that is consciousness. Whether it is appearing as this world of images, it does not matter. It is still actually consciousness. So this was something the sage just asked to convey. So getting back uh, to this topic of uh, the wondrous nature of consciousness. So you see, uh, the other terms that are used for wondrous means magical, right? Uh, in Sanskrit uh, or Hindi, they call it maya, right? Or we may call it illusion, or we may call it as changing reality. But basically, this very world, you know, uh, of changing reality, it is that I am actually talking and then others are actually listening, then others will speak. Basically, this image and everything that we see around as images, this uh, the world of space, time, images, is basically what we call as the changing reality or the wondrous nature of consciousness self, right? Now, the reason why it is actually called wondrous is that you see that which appears in the form of, uh, you know, uh, illusion or magic, or to use more better terms, which is actually temporary or transitory in nature. And when it is transitory or temporary in nature, you see the magical power is this, that while it is there, it appears actually to be real and we fall for it. But you see what the scriptures have taught, what the sages are taught. You see, the test for reality is that which actually never changes, right? And when you put this test to the presence of that pure, changeless reality consciousness, that never changes, right? Whereas the thoughts, the feelings, the desires, the emotions, the physical activity, the events, this world is actually constantly subject to change and that is what we call as uh, you see the wondrous nature of consciousness now you see ultimately when one actually is what we call as self abidance or self absorption there one is no longer fooled by this so called changing reality because you see the ultimate experience is that it is that same consciousness, which is actually presenting itself in this mirror image of changing reality, right? So what an image, whatever images you see, whatever events you see, whatever activity you see, it is none other than that changeless reality, consciousness itself, expressing itself in space and time. Because that which is actually spaceless and timeless, you see, that is what is the uh, real and pure nature of consciousness, nothing actually can be expressed there. 
But because this thing is inherent within consciousness, that is why their consciousness itself only becomes all this and actually expresses itself. So look, uh, it's it's an interesting topic and I can go on for this, uh, you know, for the next uh, hour or so. But uh, I'll just draw our attention to, there was a verse which actually says Ramana had actually communicated and it's actually very beautiful, which virtually sums up uh, this uh, wondrous nature of, uh, uh, you know, uh, consciousness. What Sage Ramana said is that, O oh heart, the light of self-awareness. So basically, what does this mean? O oh heart, the light of self-awareness. So heart is the pure consciousness. From where this light of consciousness, which is making us conscious of these images, is actually uh, coming forth, right? So O oh heart, the light of self-awareness in thee is a wondrous power, right? So within consciousness is a wondrous power. In thee is a wondrous power, none other than thee. So you see, Mark Ramana Maharaj's words that this wondrous nature is none other than consciousness itself. O heart, the light of self-awareness in thee is a wondrous power, none other than thee, right? Which by the burn of prarab, which means that which by forgetfulness means consciousness itself forgetting its own true nature. So which by the burn of prarab appears as dark, mist-like thoughts within. You see how dark, mist-like thoughts appear within us in our aura? You see? And uh, Sage Ramana continues, and when projected, it appears as these gross images outside. So when these thoughts are projected, they appear as these images that we see around us. And then Sage Ramana says, whether they appear or they do not appear, what does it matter for they are not apart from thee? So you see, I'll say this now in one whole. O heart, the light of self-awareness in thee is a wondrous power none other than thee, which by the world of Prarabh appears as mist like thoughts within and appears when projected as these gross images. Whether they appear or they don't appear, what does it matter? For they are not apart from thee. So, you know, if you look at an ocean, basically uh, the ocean is the pure consciousness and basically the waves which are actually rising and falling is this world of images or what you call as the wondrous nature. Now, what Ramana Maharishi is saying is whether these waves, they rise or they fall, whether these this world of images is there or it is not there, what does it matter? Because you see the waves are not separate from the sea and so too these images, which consciousness only is rising and falling, are not actually separate from consciousness. So, you know, this verse which I said is the very core direct experience of Ramana Maharishi and it flows from his heart and when one reaches that state of abidance you see uh, by the grace of consciousness this is what you actually experience you see this is not simply just a statement this is the ultimate truth which every human being is experiencing but because of forgetfulness we think we are an image and we think that you know our life is only connected uh, to this world of images. Uh, so I hope, uh, you know, with this short introduction, it's thrown some light on this very deep uh, topic. Uh, so Niruji herself is in complete illumination. Uh, she is going to, you know, give us a talk on uh, this. So Niruji, can you please, <clears throat> uh, can you please uh, take over? Yes. Uh, thank you, Anilji. And uh, I just want to go to my slides so that I can... Uh, start elaborating on the concept so uh, so uh, can you see my slides now yes, all right yes, they're very clear okay thank you all right uh, let's start uh, thanks to the grace uh, pranam to all sages of past present and future uh, so today our topic uh, anilji has introduced it very nicely so we are going to explore the wondrous nature of consciousness. Uh, and uh, in this topic, uh, mainly we'll discuss um, what consciousness really is 
um, why we say it's or sage has uh, uh, guided us that it is wondrous in nature. Um, and also we will look at some practical ways to awaken to it. So um, let's move the slides. Um, so uh, what is consciousness? Okay, so this is the first thing that we should understand really. Um, before going to how wondrous it is in its nature. So, so what basically in our layman uh, sort of understanding, uh, what do we mean by consciousness? Um, so normally when we talk about consciousness, we are referring to knowing um, who we are, uh, what we are, um, and uh, being aware of what is happening inside us, um, around us. For example, we all know our names, ages and who our family and friends are. Uh, we know our jobs and our daily activities, uh, who our colleagues are, who our bosses, uh, what our workplace is, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things and people are in our consciousness. Now let's do just a very simple exercise. Um, think for a moment about your daily life, okay? So think about everything that you are aware of. Uh, for example, your morning routine, uh, your work, uh, your relationships, and uh, maybe your hobbies. So this exercise helps us to recognize uh, the scope of what we are conscious of in our everyday lives. Let's now come to self-awareness, okay? So self-awareness is really very different from how we know in our normal uh, daily lives what we are, okay? So when we talk about self-awareness, uh, we just need to, you know, look at it uh, and kind of do a, a deeper study of ourselves. Um, uh, we might say in the beginning um, how we look, for example. That's uh, one example of self-awareness, becoming self-aware. So how we look. Um, we might be aware of our strengths and weaknesses. Uh, now think about this. Are you aware of your thoughts right now? Right now? So so, so what's happening in the mind? Are you aware of your thoughts? Hmm? Yes? Okay. Uh, what about your feelings? Thoughts and feelings, right? Okay. So now we move on from here. Look at thoughts and feelings. Everything that we are aware of has some content in it. Um, let's take some example outside of us. For example, I hear a bird chirping, okay? So I become conscious of the sound of the bird, right? So that's, the sound is the content of my consciousness in that scenario. Uh, let's say somebody asks, could you tell me um, the color of an apple? Let's say we are talking about red apples only at the moment. So color of an apple. And I consciously answer red. Okay. Uh, somebody asks, what do you think about this book? And I say, it is insightful. Right. So these are my perceptions of what's happening around me. All right. So I'm aware of my perceptions of the book. I'm aware of the sound of the bird or something that I am kind of, you know, I see, I hear my senses get that knowledge, etc. So our consciousness is filled with these different kinds of perceptions. That's what the idea is on a like a surface level of consciousness. Okay, so from where uh, we move on to uh, now taking an in-depth look of it. But, but here's a critical point, okay? Uh, are these perceptions real or permanent? Think about it. Uh, we were talking about the book a moment ago. So tomorrow our perceptions might change. For example, um, if I read a, if I read a new book today um, that I find better than the one that I liked before, my perception of the old book changes. So the contents of our consciousness are not constant, right? This means our everyday consciousness deals with things that are temporary and not real. Is the sound of the bird permanent? Think about it. Is your thought permanent? Do they stay forever? No. 
None of these is permanent. We are conscious of our personal identity or ego personality and its experiences, for example, thoughts and feelings, etc., relationships that we are talking about. But all of this is impermanent. Now think, what's the cause of human suffering? It is holding on to and becoming obsessed with this ever-changing consciousness, which is uh, coming to us. Uh, we are aware of that, all these various forms, appearances, etc. So holding on to this ever-changing nature of consciousness, this is the basic problem uh, for the, and the cause of the human suffering. Now, because the topic is to study the wondrous nature of consciousness. So we are looking at consciousness from different, you know, to study the different aspects of it, okay? So now we are going to look at the, the pure aspect, the pure consciousness. So like the, in reality, what it is, okay? So try to understand that. See, the highest form of consciousness, because I was, uh, you know, using the term superficial level or surface level. So now we are talking about the highest form. Okay, so the highest form of consciousness is pure. It's without content. For example, we were talking about contents in this, in the uh, uh, sense that, you know, the sounds or the thoughts or the feelings, perceptions. And we said that those are the contents of the consciousness. Okay, describing the ever-changing nature of the consciousness. But when we talk about the highest form of consciousness, that is pure, without any content. Okay. Um, it's not about, you know, like uh, we say uh, a man or a woman, or uh, we say any activities, experiences, etc. So it's, it's uh, without all of that stuff. Pure consciousness just exists as it is. It is changeless also because it just exists as it is. It doesn't take all these different forms like experiences, appearances, etc. So a key goal for those seeking deeper understanding of consciousness is to become aware of this pure consciousness at this level. And to remain in this state of pure consciousness is what self-abidance is. That's everyone's goal in this life. So rest of our talk is going to be focused on how to shift our state from ever-changing consciousness to pure consciousness because pure consciousness is what in reality consciousness is. So that should be our prime state where you know we operate from in our daily lives uh, even though we are you know transacting with other human beings, our colleagues, our family members, our friends, all of them, but still uh, it's shifting of our uh, state or you can say our position from an ever-changing consciousness to coming to this higher level of consciousness, which is pure consciousness. So that's what now we are going to try to come to. So transitioning, okay? So how do we transition from our usual everyday consciousness to this pure consciousness? The answer is by paying attention to it. Very simple, you know, if we look at it, you know, pay attention to it. It seems very simple, but you know, here is where all of this uh, contemplation or, you know, uh, self-inquiry, all these practices, uh, the goal of all those is this, paying attention to it and then establishing in it. So by understanding its nature, we could shift our standpoint from the ever-changing consciousness to, to true consciousness. And um, at the same time, we should also be trying to understand, you know, what our scriptures have guided us, what sage has guided us about it. Um, let's talk about insights from Ribu Gita about the nature of consciousness, because I find a lot of detail there uh, given in this uh, uh, ancient text. So Ribu Gita, I think every one of us knows about it, but just uh, for an introduction purpose that uh, uh, Ribu Gita is an ancient Sanskrit text of the teachings of Lord Shiva in Mount Kailash to his devotee sage Ribu. Uh, the text presents the multiplicity of consciousness. Okay, uh, for instance, uh, chapter ten of Ribu Gita states that all three states of consciousness that we human beings undergo. For example, you know we have three states of consciousness: waking, uh, and then we have deep sleep and dreaming. So these three states of 
these are consciousness. That's why we call them states of consciousness also. So it is consciousness, uh, the chapter further says, it is consciousness that appears like the senses. And it is that which appears as the objects of the world. So all worldly activity is consciousness. There is not even a blade of grass which is apart from the consciousness. And then uh, when we look at chapter 11, further it describes that all is the light of consciousness only. The sky, the mountain, the water element, the stars and the clouds are also consciousness. The eye that sees all this is also consciousness and the ear that listens to all these you know, uh, sounds, for example, whatever. So is also consciousness. All happiness and unhappiness are consciousness. The entire universe is consciousness. All three worlds, the earth uh, and the region of the dead ancestors, which is called Pitraloka, and the heavens, and also the ego, all are consciousness. Consciousness is the basis of all movements. This consciousness illumines and reveals everything. This entire world is a vast space of consciousness. And then it says, and you are also the same. There is nothing else but the space of consciousness. And then chapter 12, amazing, Ribu Gita, even states that all ignorance is also consciousness. Next, chapter 15 states, if one gives the slightest room for the thought that the mind exists. So, okay, so we, we, we know that, or we think, let's say, the mind exists. It is pure awareness itself that vibrates as the referred mind which is the parent of all troubles and illusions. Form of, form of consciousness. Chapter 16 further elaborates this. There is no such thing as the troublesome mind. No world of names and forms and not the least bit of ego. All these are nothing but pure consciousness. So it's all really very amazing stuff. Um, what we do now is do a little uh, visualization exercise. Okay, so we look at the screen. Um, so we see that, um, you know, here we uh, close our eyes maybe after looking at the screen because <laughs> we are going to do an exercise. So, so close uh, your eyes for a moment uh, and imagine a vast ocean um, full of waves. Each wave represents a movement like a, like a thought uh, we have, because in our mind also, it's just a very similar ocean happening all the time. Thoughts keep coming, going. So ocean full of waves representing all these movements like thoughts, experiences, emotions. So each wave is representing an emotion, let's say, or a thought. But... If you look overall, despite all this constant change that is happening within the ocean, the ocean remains the same. Just like that consciousness is a vast unchanging ocean, um, while our thoughts and experiences are the waves that come and go in it. So what we do next is now, uh, imagine the ocean is perfectly still. Uh, this still ocean represents pure consciousness, which is untouched by any waves. Uh, we can open our eyes and we can have a look at the screen now. So screen is showing a still ocean. <coughs> so now we can compare the previous slide with this slide. Previous slide representing an ocean full of movement of waves and all. That's what our mind, when active, is full of thoughts, feelings, perceptions, etc. But then the reality is that still, stillness, okay? There is a stillness. So that still ocean on the screen uh, that you see representing pure consciousness, which is untouched by all those waves um, that were happening. If we look at that very busy ocean, you can say. So this simple visualization helps us understand the difference between our everyday consciousness and pure consciousness. So what everyday consciousness is, that is the dynamic facet. And what pure consciousness is, 
it is the stillness underlying the movements occurring in our daily lives. So we move on. But um, we might um, wonder uh, why there is a need uh, you know, for the consciousness to manifest all this variety of uh, appearances. Pure consciousness needs to express it, its diverse attributes. Because, you know, Apple, we looked at the sound of the bird, we look at the thoughts, we look at the book and all that stuff. So diverse attributes. Um, consciousness wants to taste, you know, its nature in terms of all this diversity and multiplicity of uh, forms that it is. And also it needs to watch these attributes happening. So one form manifests to express the attribute and the other forms manifest to, to watch the attribute. For instance, consciousness manifests as a flower to express its attributes of fragrance, um, color and texture, let's say. Um, it manifests as a human to express the emotions of joy that comes. So when we look at the flower, we touch the flower, so there's a pleasure. So, so on one side, you see that it is appearing as a flower to give that joy and on the, on the other side, it is appearing as a human to experience the joy. So that's how it works. Also, any of the unique attributes of consciousness require a limitation in space or time. So due to this reason, pure consciousness appears as time-space limited forms. Consciousness is the basis of ego personality also. Let's look at ourselves also. So it appears as an I thought in us that gives rise to the concept of that individual sense that each one of us have without, uh, with, about us. So every human has that. And any other living entity as well. For example, look at birds. They have an I thought. Um, insects have I thought. Animals have that individuality, you know, the sense of an individual being uh, uh, within themselves. So that is, you know, all um, the, the manifested forms. Uh, so that, that variety of the appearances, okay? So that is one way of looking at the wondrous nature of consciousness. But then, you know, at the, at the same time, you see that there is also many other uh, ways in which we understand, uh, we can appreciate that how wondrous it is. For example, you know, we were talking about the, the pure form of con consciousness so that it remains untouched. That is also uh, kind of, uh, you know, reflecting that wondrous nature because on one hand it is appearing as diversity of uh, all those attributes, but then it also remains untouched by them also because it remains in purity also present in them. So consciousness is all pervasive. It is present in everything and everyone. However, it underlies everything in its pure form also, which remains untouched by the manifested form. Uh, you know, think about how, uh, water takes the shape of the, the container it is in, yet it remains uh, fundamentally the same water. Similarly, consciousness pervades everything, giving life to all these forms, but it does not change its essence. Um, we can also have a, you know, take an example of sun. So imagine the sun shining brightly in the sky, its light illuminates everything it touches, uh, creating shadows and forms. However, the sun itself remains unaffected by the shadows. So consciousness is just like the sun, always shining, illuminating our experiences while our thoughts and emotions are, you know, like shadows that are ever changing and transient. But the consciousness itself, it does not change. So pure consciousness remains hidden under all this variety of experiences. That's what it is so uh, you can say maybe overwhelming or enticing or you know absorbing, immersing that we have forgotten what we essentially are, and uh, instead we have mistaken ourselves that we are mind, you know, a collection of all these experiences that that keeps captivating our attention, keeping us away from the true consciousness that we really are. So. So as a result, the true consciousness remains absent from our attention. And it is due to this lack of attention or knowledge of what we are. We think we are the mind. Uh, we are not consciousness. And then we seek, we try to, uh, you know, like we have aim that 
we will uh, get to that stage or we will achieve it. Um, it's like we see the movie screen, not as a blank screen, but we see it as something occupied with all those pictures and all. And that's what our perception is about the movie screen, that it is pictures, but actually uh, there is blank screen as well. So likewise, um, consciousness is perceived in um, our awareness as the manifested objects and not in its purity. Um, so we talked about the uh, variety of appearances. That's one way we um, looked at the wondrous nature. Then we looked at, you know, uh, in spite of all that, there is an untouched aspect of it. So that was, let's say, number two. But then there's few more ways to understand its wondrous nature. So another way is non-duality. So the, the world and our individuality seems real. But Sage Ramana guides us that this is an illusion. So true consciousness is one and indivisible. Okay. So it, there is purity, but another thing which we need to, to understand is that it is one thing. It is indivisible. So this oneness, okay, that's the uh, one very important way we need to look at it. And then one more way we look at it is that it's unknowable through thought. We cannot completely understand by intellect. While we can experience this pure consciousness through self-inquiry, but it cannot be fully grasped by the mind. It cannot be expressed through the words. Uh, this mysterious quality okay, also adds to the wondrous nature of pure consciousness. So let's uh, move on. So what we do um, now, having understood the, uh, you know, all about the wondrous nature of consciousness is, um, to let's try to get to that level of pure consciousness, which is present in us. Because uh, all the time we are occupied with this, uh, you know, uh, the experiences that we um, uh, kind of, you know, experience, uh, for example, all thoughts and feelings and perceptions, etc. But also, you know, at the same time, we should be trying to get to that, to to become consciously, you can say, aware of the presence of that pure consciousness in us. So that's what we are trying to achieve through this uh, uh, exercise. Uh, the steps are in front of you on the screen. This will take about 10 minutes. Uh, we will do it slowly, gradually. So in this, uh, what we do is uh, uh, look at uh, the, the step one, uh, which we call settling in. So in this, uh, what we need to do is, um, find a comfortable position for us. Of course, everyone is sitting or, you know, in a comfortable uh, way attending the satsang. But yeah, so just trying to be very comfortable in our position, whatever way it feels the, the best for you. Um, close your eyes uh, and take a few deep breaths. So breaths uh, in a way that we are breathing in through the nose, uh, but exhaling through the mouth. So breathe in and then open the mouth and uh, exhale the air out. Um, and allow your body to relax every time you exhale. So let's try, okay? So all getting very comfortable, uh, wherever we are sitting in a chair, on the floor, uh, wherever. So just trying to be very comfortable uh, uh, in our position. Uh, so are all of us in comfortable position now, right? Okay. So breathe in and out through the mouth. Okay. So breathe in once and out. Breathe in, out. Okay. So everyone is comfortable now. Um, so could we move to the next step now? Yes, okay, all right. So so step two, uh, this step is about physical awareness. So in this step, what we mean is that we will be aware of what the body is experiencing. So just paying attention to what is happening to the body, all right? Um, so begin by bringing your attention to your body. Notice any sensations you are experiencing. Um, 
you may feel the contact of your body with the chair that you are using right now or if you are sitting on the floor or let's say on the carpet so just try to to feel the contact of the body with that so is the body comfortable um light do you do you notice the pulse uh, heartbeat so these are the sensations that normally the body experiences um yes so do you feel like taking a deep breath maybe so you can take a deep breath and feel the sensation of that. Um, do you need to change your posture? If you want to change your posture, you change your posture. But just observe what, what's happening to the body. So, so do what you want to do, uh, making yourself comfortable, but simply observing these bodily movements. Just observe without trying to force anything. Okay, um, Be fully present with your body. Just watch what is happening to the body. So are you aware of your bodily sensations now? Yes. Okay. So now we can move to the next step. So step three. So this step is about emotional awareness. So now we shift our attention, our focus from the bodily sensations to, to the emotions. So what are you feeling right now? So what I am feeling right now? See, uh, we may ask this question maybe um, and, and then just try to see what sort of feelings are we getting. So the point is not to change your feelings. It's not that this feeling is good, this feeling is great, this feeling is not so good, so I'm going to change my feeling, uh, why I am getting this feeling. Uh, so it is not an analysis of the feelings, okay? It is not questioning yourself or judging anything about the feelings. It is just simply observing what feeling is coming at the moment. Just simply, just that. Okay? Yeah. So, so don't feel, don't ask yourself, is it right feeling or wrong feeling? Just detached from the feeling, just noticing what is happening. Okay? Yeah. Acknowledging any emotions that are present at the moment. So whether you feel calm, um, you feel happy or you are feeling anxious maybe or if there is any other emotions, don't worry. Just notice and accept whatever feeling is coming. Okay. So now attending to the feelings, now we move to the next step that is thought awareness. So, so in this step, we will bring our attention to our thoughts. So what thoughts are passing through? your mind um, are they focused on the past are they focused on the future or uh, something happening at present in front of you okay um, or maybe I mean inside the mind so anything that's happening at present uh, so again this the same approach that we used uh, when we were in step three for emotions, okay? So we are not going to judge any thoughts. This thought is bad. I must change it. This thought is good. No. So without any judgment of thoughts, just simply observing which thoughts are coming, okay? Just simply observing. But not sticking to the thought, okay? Just allow to flow freely. It comes and let it go. Because, you know, when the thought comes, um, we notice it, but at this point, at that point, when we notice that, yes, there is a thought coming in. So at that point, we have two options. One option is to stick to it. Okay. So if we choose that option, we see a story starts to build around that thought. Then judgment comes, commentary comes, the things about past, thoughts about future. So the, the story keeps building. But the other option is to notice the coming of the thought and let it pass without sticking to it. Okay. So the thought appeared and disappeared. Another thought appeared and disappeared. And another and another. So like this, simply observing thoughts as they come and go without getting attached to them. As we are simply aware of the thoughts, Let's shift our focus from the thoughts to reach even a deeper state in us. Okay. So, all right. So that's going to be our step five. So in step five, that's about 
awareness of being. So try to sense what is present in you. That is simply observing the bodily sensations. So what in you observed the bodily sensations when we were doing the step two? There is something in you that was observing the emotions when we were doing the step three. Okay. So, so what is this in you that is observing the, the bodily sensations, observing the, the emotions and then observed the thoughts? What is that part in you? Okay. That part in you, if you can go to that, touch that, that part of you is pure consciousness. It is the constant observer, always present. Now, so when we reach there, we, we rest in this awareness. Okay, so let's rest in this awareness for a few moments and feel the stillness present in the state. We need to acknowledge that this part of us remains present beneath the movements of sensations, the movements of feelings and thoughts. Uh, in each step, we try to be aware of one layer of consciousness. So, you, so it was unfolding, you know. In step two, we were aware of the physical sensations. So then in step three, it unfolded that, yes, now we are aware of something more deeper, which is emotions. And then further deeper, there is thoughts. But then this is kind of the, the deepest. So going one layer deeper at every step, we reach at this level where there is no movement, okay? So no movement remains and all there is the pure consciousness and it is always there. So moment of silence, that's what we mean by it. So stay in this state of pure consciousness for, for one minute. Simply be present and just observing. Although your sensations, feelings and thoughts, they are not absent from you, from your attention in this moment of silence. The underlying consciousness is also in your attention. That's what we mean to say. All right. We are not shifting from the dynamic aspect of consciousness in a sense that, um, like a mystical sense that now we are not going to think about any thought, not, we are not going to do any, you know, th have any feelings, let's say, no experience. It's not that. It is having, you know, all that perception happening to us, but at the same time, we are also aware of that, which is making all these possible through these manifestations, okay? So, so you could compare this state to being aware of the blank screen when you are also aware of the moving pictures on that same screen, okay? But, but the difference is that now your primary state of being is the pure consciousness instead of uh, this being the all the time, uh, you know, that movements, experiencing the movements. But now it is that the primary state is the pure consciousness and at that state, conditioned at that state now, we are like a watcher. We are watching the flow uh, the, of the thoughts, we are watching the emotions, we are watching all this, what is happening inside us and also, also around us. So now, um, this is a moment of uh, maybe sharing uh, what we all experienced. Uh, so, um, so could I invite you at this moment to, to share your experiences, to reflect upon what you experienced uh, so we can unmute ourselves um, at this moment and uh, maybe we can post, you can post in the chat, the devotees can post in the chat or um, unmute themselves and also if they like to share any thoughts about it, uh, please do that. So we are going to discuss a few questions, uh, just only three questions we have. And um, so the, the first one that uh, we are going to reflect upon is, what did you notice about your body, um, emotions and thoughts during the exercise? Means, uh, did you notice uh, and uh, and then, uh, so so what was happening? Uh, second question we can look at is how did you uh, how, how did it feel to connect with the pure consciousness part of yourself, um, the pure consciousness that is just aware, that is the observer, the constant, unchanging observer, underlying 
the sensations, emotions, and thoughts. So, so how was it, um, you know, connecting with that part in you? And uh, did this exercise change your perception of yourself or your understanding of consciousness? Okay. So, if we can just spend a few moments of sharing any insights, that would be really helpful. Yes, anybody wants to please uh, share? They just unmute and then, you know, you're welcome to share your experiences. What about you, Mamtaji? What about you, Kavita ji? Do you want to share something? I think everyone has to unmute themselves before they can talk. Yes. Uh, at the time when uh, we were asked to uh, think, I mean, look at our feelings, I, I could not find out any feelings at that moment of time. And mm -hmm. thoughts were very, I was not aware of how even thoughts also. But when we were uh, made to go more deeper, I was very much comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, and observing the seer, not what is seen. Right. Uh, so at that time, uh, I could connect with it. And mm -hmm. uh, the what was the feeling as I, uh, it was like no, nothingness complete nothingness and uh, uh, in that nothingness I could feel very much uh, secure and uh, happiness or something like that I can but I can not find an exact word for it but it was really uh, a state which I mean I don't have proper words for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's what the the wondrous nature is. It cannot be expressed through words. <laughs> Thank you so much. For <laughs> experience, Kataji. Thank you so much. Okay. What about uh, is uh, what about Hari Omji? Would you like to say something? So I was fully engrossed in whatever Ma'am was saying. So uh, each step. I could follow that uh, how my body was behaving and what sort of emotions. I could not feel any such emotions. I was at very ease, and I could hardly notice any thoughts coming in the during the exercise. So basically, it was a very calm kind of a situation. Right, right. And I could see I uh, the thoughts and emotions, and one could observe. But getting in touch with that stillness, I still uh, need to improve. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what about you, Mamtaji? You want to say something? Or anyone else? Yeah, I think I, I could feel a, a feeling of peace and and stillness and yeah just peace and stillness yeah thank you so much Angie. that's very good okay so um anybody wants to share their experience what we need on from you this is Brinda. ah yes. okay yes in that silence one could actually understand hmm. that from whatever comes is from there could actually understand that yeah, thank you so much for sharing with us anybody else uh, please? yes uh, Niruji Pranam Rajesh here yeah, yes Rajesh here. yeah so as you instructed uh, that during that process uh, I can connect with uh, 
uh, with my uh, uh, body parts where I feel the sensation and uh, I can feel uh, the emotions and uh, even I can connect with the thoughts uh, that uh, thoughts were uh, flowing in the mind. Mm -hmm. So it was a deeper uh, uh, I, uh, I was went into I went into a deeper layer of uh, awareness. Uh, but uh, during that process, uh, some thoughts came into my mind that this is uh, really awareness. So this is what my mind is doing. So uh, that time it was uh, uh, was thoughtless. But the thought is and uh, and. Uh, some thoughts also arises that is, is it really a awareness or it is the mind is doing that thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> Actually, because it's your mind itself that is posing a challenge because uh, it doesn't want to go away. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> so it comes in the, you know, in that process. <laughs> yeah. Should we move on? Uh, because I have a couple more slides, so let's uh, move on now. Thank you so much for sharing your insight. Really helpful for all the Okay, so um, just trying to sum up from all your um, you know uh, insights that we have uh, we have shared. Uh, the key points that we can take away from the exercise is that um, consciousness is ever present ever-present awareness uh, that observes all experiences. Um, it is a wondrous and integral part of our being. Uh, the contents of consciousness, uh, in the sense thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations that we keep experiencing every moment, and consciousness in its purity, they are distinct, and they both are present in us. Pure consciousness is unchanging and ever-present, even as our thoughts and emotions, they keep changing. And what we need to do as devotees, seeker, carry this awareness of this pure consciousness which is present in you, carry this awareness with us wherever we go, whatever we do, practice observing our thoughts, emotions, and experiences with a sense of curiosity, in the sense that it is an ever-changing nature of this wondrous nature consciousness um and and uh, but at the same time in us there is a non-judgmental uh, that uh, that unchanging consciousness also present um now um let's talk about some practical ways to awaken to this consciousness apart from the exercise that we did of course that is also very helpful but sage has guided us to use some other methods as well in addition to you know it's like a basket of uh, methods. So self-inquiry, SAGE emphasized really very important, a direct and immediate experience with pure consciousness that is possible with self-inquiry. So he teaches that the inquiry should be very intense also. It's, you know, with a real intense inquiry only the results happen. So uh, regularly asking ourselves questions like, who am I beyond my name, my job, my roles? What remains constant in my awareness, even as when my thoughts and feelings are changing, but still, you know, what is there that is always observing them and unchanged? So how can I tap into that pure unchanging part of me? So like, am I aware of myself in truth? What I am really? Am I this mortal body? Where do the thoughts come from? If we just keep asking these questions to us. So at that moment, uh, there is one principle that helps us also, that is the principle of knower and known. So the principle of knower and known that states that what you know is not you. So we are not the body because we can't, we can perceive the body. So that's why we are not the body. Uh, we know the our limbs like lungs, skin, heart, etc., hands and legs. So we are not that. We are not the, the pulse, heartbeat, breath, sight, hearing. I mean, all these senses, we are not that. We are not thoughts because we observe thoughts. We are not even feelings because they are not permanent and we are aware of them. So Sage Ramana says that reality is not the body. And neither it's any of these five senses or the sense objects, the organs of action, the prana, the mind, or even the deep sleep state where there is no cognizance of these. 
So after rejecting each of these and saying this I am not, this I am not, this I am not, and then which alone remains is that's what we essentially are and that is pure consciousness. And he also said that this state is of I am. So, so what we actually mean by this saying I am, this means that we simply exist without any associations with any forms like you know I am let's say Niru. So without the name, without gender, without quality, without emotion, without intention, it's just a simply a feeling of existence. I exist, that's all. Just a simple knowing of that existence is all that remains. So when we just keep rejecting all of those that is at the surface level, and they, then we reach that deeper state, uh, which is indescribable through words as uh, Vindraji Nehaji said. So, so this practice when done with intensity can lead to deeper insights. Yes, it takes time as uh, uh, Rajeshji said that mind again appears. Yes, it will keep appearing, but then over a period of time, a time will come when it will be possible to stay for longer periods of time also in that deep state while also transacting in the normal life, in a, like in a normal way. And then second thing, uh, very important as a practice, presence in the daily activities. So present moment exercises, they could be done using any simple activities. For example, let's take a cup of you know, uh, tea. So when we drink the tea, uh, we may start by bringing our full attention to that moment when we are drinking the tea. Uh, we refer to you know this as bringing attention, full attention to the present moment. So, so you may do this by feeling the weight of the cup. You know when you are holding the cup in your hands. So, weight of the cup. Do you notice the temperature of the cup when you drink your tea? Do you feel the texture of the cup? Do you notice the shape of the, what is the color of the tea? Do you notice the steam rising from the surface of the liquid? So just totally looking at it, because normally when we do all these activities, what we don't look at them, what we do, we, our mind is somewhere else. So when we focus our attention on these little details, this anchors our awareness in that moment. So we be present in that moment. That helps in settling the mind and remaining calm. So what we mean is that we move beyond the surface level of our habitual, that flow of thoughts and we reach a deeper state of awareness through these simple activities. Then another method, uh, uh, nature walks. So spending time in nature, observing the details of the surroundings, uh, the sounds and the sights and the smells. So that is also a way of grounding us in the present moment. And then uh, quiet meditation also helps spending some time every day in quiet meditation, focusing on your breath, maybe and let your thoughts come and go without attachment. This helps connecting with the deeper awareness. And finally, uh, gratitude practice. So at the end of each day, reflecting upon what you are grateful for, this shifts your focus from the contents of your awareness to a more, more expansive awareness. Uh, so this finishes the talk. So just concluding by saying that consciousness is a vast and wondrous field, encompassing everything that we experience and much more. By exploring and understanding this consciousness, we can begin to, to awaken to a deeper reality and, and live more, uh, you know, becoming more self-aware and also lead joyful uh, lives. But, uh, but bear in mind that the journey from, uh, you know, our everyday consciousness to pure consciousness is a, it's a totally a personal uh, exercise, personal process journey maybe you can say and it's an ongoing one so it keeps unfolding it seems there is no end to it so each moment of awareness brings us closer to understanding our true nature okay so that's how uh, i think um, uh, it is indescribable but uh, maybe in a limited time <laughs> we can just uh, talk about it in just you know this way so thank you all for joining me on this um, exploration today so i hope you found it enlightening and, and uh, that you carry these insights with you uh, as you go about uh, your day today. Thank you and you know, every Thanks. Thank you, uh, Niruji. Uh, that was uh, very nice. Uh, Vijayji, can I please ask you to conclude? Vijayji is there? Uh, Hariyom, Hariyom. Yes, yes. Oh, please. sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll just start with the Om. Om. 
dear seekers in the divine today's topic which is the wondrous nature of consciousness um is you know the nature itself is playful so we can also call it the wondrous play of consciousness because what is seen in that play is something which is beyond the mind the human being the individual who considers oneself as that limited being is caught up we are all caught up in that uh, conditioned mind with the conditioning of the surroundings what is being taught as discussed by uh, you know neeru ji and anil ji the the mind which consists of the physical feelings the mental feelings the thoughts the intellectual feelings and the discernment of the intellect all that comprise what we term as the mind but beyond this mind which is prior to this mind which is aware of what is termed as the worldly consciousness perception of images prior to that is pure consciousness and that is what is throwing the light for that mind the ego consciousness to be aware of thoughts feelings physical sensations perceptions of these images in this world now the these this particular limited changing consciousness which is the world that is created which is created by what by the mind by the ego sense so the mind plus consciousness or consciousness plus mind is this changing world pure consciousness is ever existent which is ever change uh, changeless actually pure absolutely changeless but when it is associated with the mind it is a changing form of this world this creation what we perceive as the world as raman maharshi said that in reality there is no creation as such it is only the creative process that is not negated the creative process is created by this ego sense it is like a snake and the rope the rope is ever existent the rope is there but the mind perceives it in the darkness when one is ignorant without the light of pure consciousness one perceives that as a snake so an image is created on top of that truth of the rope and one sees a snake and then all the emotions the fear physical sensations the thought sensations the mental sensations all these come about when that is realized and the light of pure consciousness dawns and reveals truth of the rope as being the rope then one is aware that that is not a snake one goes beyond that limitedness and realizes truth as it is that is what the mind creates around us 
and all these exercises that were discussed, all these practices that have been suggested, is only and only to remove these false notions that the mind creates. To create a veil, as it were, of ignorance around what the truth actually is. Being aware of the world and the images and perceiving these images is what the mind is used to and we are aware of that and we are conscious of that. But what is the important thing is to try and practice to find out who is aware of that awareness. Prior to this aware, being aware of this world and objects and images, there is something that is being aware of this awareness. This world is being perceived on the fulcrum of pure awareness. There has to be a stepping back and seeing from the perception of not ego consciousness, but from awareness, pure awareness. This world will continue as it is meant to. The body continues on and Ramana Maharshi lived in that body for many years. So the world, the, the world itself and the images itself don't disappear. But truth is known. As Jagadguru Adi Shankaracharya said in a very cryptic message, very short aphorism, he said, Brahma Satya Jagan Mithya Jeevo Brahmaeva Na Paraha which means Brahman is the truth. Totality, pure consciousness is the truth. This world is an illusion created as in the snake in the rope. But the world is not different from Brahman. World is not different from pure consciousness. Because pure consciousness is changeless. And the world is a changing form of the changeless. It is no different. They both are the same. It's only the screen, the water, the waves in the water. The waves are only named as waves, but that is itself water. It is no different from the ocean water. The waves are waves. As termed by the mind. But that itself is water. Similar to that, the screen and the images on the screen, as Neeruji mentioned, is the same. The images are no different. They only play on the screen of the screen. When the images disappear, the new images come up and they keep changing. But the screen is ever constant. And this play, this wondrous play goes on. So there is there is no question of negating this world. Yes, in the middle of the practice, when the practice is very, very strong, Raman Maharshi actually mentioned that there has to be negation of this up to a certain point because one can't go beyond the mind. So then that negation has to be there. Or using this world and thinking of it as an illusion, it is very important. But when truth is revealed, 
the world and pure consciousness is seems is is the same no different and then one revels in the wondrous play of consciousness that is the truth of this wondrous nature of consciousness all is seen as a play as a cosmic play and that truth is not something new that one is going to achieve or attain because whatever is to be achieved and whatever is to be attained will be a changing thing it will come and go but when it is your own true nature you are already that then what is there to achieve what is there to attain it is only to remove the cobwebs of what is not what we have what has been superimposed as it were on top the cobwebs of ignorance if they are removed the veil is removed revelation of truth is ever present you are already that so self inquiry as enumerated by raman maharshi bhagwan raman maharshi is the absolute simplest but then practices have to be done various practices so that the thick layer of cobwebs can at least be wiped away those sadhanas those practices are just to clear away the mind that is all the practices are for after that the practices um uh, you don't one doesn't need to continue going on and on one that revelation is already there only important thing in all these practices practice as hard as one may the most important ingredient is the intensity the intensity of wanting to know one's true nature intensity to know truth as it were that is really really important because and having that gratitude for having been given this opportunity all those we have who have gathered here are obviously interested in this that itself is a blessing is a one is has to be um, humble in gratitude that we all are grat gathered to to try and learn what is the truth but that requirement and the wanting has to be so intense that all other so called needs and wants are put put aside and intense inquiry continues and sadhana continues there is no point in going over all the points that niru ji mentioned but to sum up that is what is the most important thing in today's discussion that the wondrous play of nature is not just to um eat drink enjoy and let the body go away but the intensity to know why this why who is this who is enjoying this thing who is it keep saying i i i i who is this i no one knows what this i is i is only attached to this name i is only attached to the form 
I is only attached to the perception of this images that are seen as me and the other. Who is this I? No one questions this. That questioning has to be with such intensity that revelation has to happen of truth. It cannot but happen. Let us do just a couple of minutes, one or two minutes of this silent meditation with just a few words in between uh, further to uh, Niruji's meditation as well. So let's all close our eyes. Be comfortable. One is aware of the physical bodily feelings. One is also aware of mental thoughts, intellectual perceptions. One is also aware of emotions. But the key word is one is aware. Or I am aware. Well, who is this I? Is this I this limited body? Is this I this limited mind? Is this I this limited intellect? Something is aware of this body. Something is aware of this mind. Something is aware of this intellect. What is that that is aware of this awareness? What is it that is conscious of this consciousness? Who is this? Who am I? Let us dive deep into the very recesses of the spiritual heart. To seek, to search, for that which is ever existent, ever real, ever pure, absolute, pure consciousness. Which through its light of pure awareness reveals this wondrous nature of the changing. Continue to inquire who is this who is aware 
where from does this I arise from? Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Niruji, and thank you, Vijayji, for uh, really a beautiful, uh, you know, satsang or spiritual discussion uh, today. Uh, and I also thank every one of you for having, you know, given your time uh, to attend. Uh, we'll catch up again in a month's uh, time. So with that, uh, we'll bring the uh, spiritual get together uh, to a close, just with the last words that look, the only thing that you really have to stay with is actually consciousness and just everything is actually temporary and not really worth following. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. And uh, for now, and thank you.